On YouTube, people are more than 200 times more likely to view a video if it has pictures of beautiful women. Now is also the time on YouTube when we ask when an atom radioactively transforms to another atom, where does the information carrying capacity of the new atomic orbitals of the new atom go or come from? Yo, liquids have more possible electron orbital possibilities per moment, is what I think Wikipedia says. When an atom radioactively transforms from zinc to gallium or gallium to germanium, the liquid gallium form contains many, many, many billions of times more information carrying capacity per moment. Yet, either the gain or loss of a proton is sufficient to cause this to occur at either direction. It's possible this huge surplus of possible computation capacity or quantized level capacity is actually associated with a geometry change. And there's a possibility that with every kind of geometry change, information density or possibility changes vastly, changes epochally. Here we see a very obvious geometric transformation from a sphere to a torus, or a torus to a sphere. Yet I've read that the surface of a torus can be mappable with seven colors, whereas the surface of a sphere has a different mappability. Thus, the transformation of a mathematical description from something like NP-complete to NP-non-complete may be happening vast numbers of times even at uh, precisely described quantized systems. I don't actually remember how all this works. Uh, I think Stephen Hawking created some kind of wonderful equations that were the first to adequately describe uh, the change of possible uh, information meaning uh, at a gravitational singularity because that uh, possibility of information had to be accounted for with the uh, previous model of physics. So what I'm saying here is that uh, how is it that the atomic transformation of just one atom can create vast epical billions and trillions and quadrillions more quantized possible moments uh, going with either direction of a proton added or removed, as well as changing uh, the geometrical description of something from NP-complete to NP-non-complete on a continuous basis. Where does all that information go? And can equations that describe that be used to create new technologies? An approach to creating new technologies is to create a laser stationarized uh, zinc or germanium atom and then have it decay to gallium, uh, similar to how rubidium atoms are uh, made stationary and then measured, to see how all of the quantum levels change simultaneously and measure any kind of anisotropic difference based on uh, things near the atom that's uh, transforming from one element to another. The zinc suddenly becomes gallium, or the germanium suddenly becomes gallium. Uh, that liquid metal gallium, gallium is a liquid metal at standard temperature and pressure, has vast numbers more, of more moments of possible uh, computation per moment, or quantized states per moment. To create a new technology, look to see if the atoms near it uh, have any kind of change to see if there's some kind of things that can happen per moment energy field, a kind of chrono field, or things that can happen per moment uh, effect with directionality, which would be like a chrono energy beam. Uh, using those things creates a possibility of a new kind of uh, chrono technology, which could affect many things like slowing or making more rapid 
the amount of radioactivity or the rate of radioactive decay, or even a mathematically uh, structured way to describe stochastic changes to the environment, yet as a directed beam rather than an area effect, a coherent entropy beam. If it's possible to remove uh, stochastic interactions uh, with a beam, then it may be possible to create uh, new kinds of uh, stasis fields as well, or to create uh, the opposite, super accelerated uh, change. <laughs>